Hello, Ian Finley here with Research Triangle High School. This is the third in our very basic, very elementary uh, tutorial on the use of the HOG4 PC system. So we talked in the last video about um, creating queues in the queue list and building them in in the queue uh, the queue window here. We talked about intensity, which of course the brightness of the lights is the major thing you're going to be looking at. Um, but if you're using LED lights, you can also make them pretty much any color of the rainbow. That's one of the great uh, beauties of LED lights and why, though they are more expensive, they may well be worth investing in because instead of having a different instrument with a different gel anytime you want a light uh, of a different color, you can build it right into the queue here in the HOG4 PC um, and have that color created. Now there's a lot of different ways you can create color. There's a way, um, let's uh, select say our six pars, you can come over here to palettes, and then to the color directory, you can choose specific gel colors, or you can choose um, a color wheel and select, let's select like a big red here. And then what we'll see if we get rid of all these other palette things um, is that that has chosen the hue and the saturation of that, which is zero degrees and 65% of where we chose on that. Um, on that color wheel. But what I find is that using that color wheel is a little bit slow, frankly. Um, especially if it uh, opens up all those other windows. And the fact is, it doesn't always work very well. Uh, if I select our uh, Source 4s, um, which are a much more expensive uh, instrument, much more powerful instrument, and choose that, it actually doesn't work at all. Um, it does not allow for use of that. Now, I think there's a way to, to patch that, to update that, maybe, to make it so it does communicate. But it turns out there's a much, much easier way to do that. Um, because all colors can be represented as two values in lighting, the hue and the saturation, I just grab myself a color wheel like this one, a very basic one. Um, I just have it printed out when I'm doing lighting cues so I can have that sitting next to me in the coffee shop. Um, and then whenever I need a color, I just find its hue, that is its degree around the circle, and its saturation, that is the percent from the center out, and enter into those boxes. So any color, can be represented by some position around the circle and therefore degree measure. So 0 or 360 is your deep red, your green is 120, and your blue is 240. And then intermediate to those, those of you who know your color theory, 60 is your yellow, 180 is your cyan, and 300 is your magenta. So any color can be expressed as some degree around the circle. Um, and then it's uh, saturation goes from either 0%, which is totally white, so even if I had this deep blue 240, if it's 0%, that's the very center, that's totally white. And then about halfway through, let's say about 50%, that's a, that's a somewhat deeper blue, and 100% is a very, very deep blue. So any color you want can be represented as those two things. Typically, when we talk about hue and saturation, we also talk about intensity. And the intensity, of course, is controlled by the intensity of the light, the brightness of that light, which we've already set. So we really only need, in terms of color, to think about those two variables. So let's say that we want to make uh, seen a nice warm amber, very common thing. We would see, well, amber is probably around about here, maybe at 45 degrees. Um, but we don't want them super duper amber. We don't want them to look like they've been tanning for a month. So let's say that maybe about 50%, maybe even close to 40%. So about 45 degrees, 40%, that's going to be a nice warm amber. So how do we do that? Well, we'll it's the same exact thing we would use if we were setting the intensity of the light. We select the hue for the light, we collect set, we enter 45 degrees for that hue, enter, and then in terms of its saturation, we'll select, hit set, we said we want about 40%, enter, and now uh, that will be a uh, color that will come out of that light right about there on the color wheel. Um, now some lights, like the six bars, also have some additional elements. These have dedicated cyan, magenta, and yellow, as well as de dedicated amber, white, and ultraviolet elements. Um, the cyan, magenta, and yellow are not directly controlled here because they're being controlled by the hue and the saturation. But let's say we wanted to bump up the amber a bit. So we could just select the amber elements within that, set them, say, at 70%, enter, and that just gives us a bit of a richer amber. Uh, the Even though they're more expensive, the source 4s do not have those additional 
uh, elements. So let's say that we want to make the source fours also uh, amber. Same sort of thing. We select their hue. This is local hue instead of general hue. That doesn't really matter the difference. Uh, click set. We've decided 45 degrees is about right. Enter. And then saturation set at 40 degrees. Enter. And now those are going to be um, amber as well. And what's great is, you notice we're here in Q101. It's, oh, we have to update it. Let me do that real quick so it's not modified. Update. That saves us. Double click Q to show it again. Here we are in 101. And then if I click go to take us to 102, notice it's grayed out because it's getting its value from the, the past one, but we're still in all that same amber. Um, so you don't have to set the color every time we go to a, um, a different queue. And we'll hit go again. That'll take us into Q103. And we notice all the six pars go out. That's the queue we programmed last time. But they're still programmed to be that amber. We see them here in the grayed out. So when they come back up again, they'll be amber. Um, let's go to Q104. And so let's add some color in the six parts. That's what we labeled it when we made that cue. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course, uh, if we're going to see the color, we've got to have some intensity. So let's start by moving the intensity up. Set. Let's set that 80% to match the ellipsoidals. Enter. That brightens them up. We're going to have some saturated color. Let's take the amber out because that's going to make it a little bit uh, weirder. And then let's just play around uh, with some color. Here's my color wheel here. Um, so maybe I want to make a couple of them a deep blue. So let's select these two, set at 240. That's deep blue according to my um, my color wheel. And maybe want a nice garish magenta. Let's take a couple of these, set them at 300. Not that you'd ever do anything this vivid unless you were making like a circus. And let's uh, put something on the other side. Let's make a, a nice... Uh, warm yellow. Set that at 60. And because we we're really showing off some colors, let's set the intensity for all of these. Let's set that at, why not, 100%. Super, super big. And then we'll just hit update. Double click Q to show it again. And now we see, now we've got some really dramatic color going on in there. So that is how that you can use the Q list and a very basic color wheel um, to select color uh, using the hue and saturation uh, boxes um, of your your Q spreadsheet. Um, uh, again, there are tools within within the palettes to do that, but I frankly found it easier just to use the standard uh, color wheel to do that. So that is our video on color.